<laughs> All right, let's tone it down a bit. So though it's a very, very serious business talking about African uh, fashion, mm. there's a new breed of African designers putting the continent on the world map. Yeah, because of them, the world is gradually building an interest in African culture and its uh, fashion industry. Now, from our lovely bold prints to our versatile design ideas, it is no wonder that foreign celebrities like Rihanna, Beyonce, uh, 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 Janet Jackson and many others uh, can't have enough of African clothing. Yes, indeed. And one person who is making a mark in Nigeria's fashion industry yeah. is indeed, uh, uh, well, Susan Ayo Ikwe. Uh, of course, she used to be honesty. Many people uh, <laughs> know that, uh, of course. Uh, well, beyond being a versatile and well-grounded journalist, Susan is also a well-established fashion designer. Mm. She runs Eve 2000, mm. an upscale fashion designing outfit based in Lagos. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good to, nice see, you. to see you. Too. You know, it's not every time that we, we have the opportunity of seeing glitters oh on, the, on the show. <laughs> uh, you're, you're glittering uh, right now. I'm trying um, to bring some sparkles uh, to the day. Absolutely. And we do need morning. it on a Friday like this. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, is the world about to stand still for African fashion? I mean, I watched the AMVCAs, mm -hmm. the red carpet, mm -hmm. all of the, the, the from uh, Rita Dominic mm -hmm. and all the rest of them, all dressed by Nigerian designers. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Spectacular designs. Exactly. Really. Um, yeah, the world's taking a serious notice of what is happening in the African continent mm -hmm. right now. And it's all because of, I, I think majorly because what's happening Nigeria really mm -hmm. because the outpour of um, fashion ideas from here is becoming you know um, world-class yes you see a lot of young designers as a matter of fact who are fascinated by um, what's happening on the global scene fashion wise and mm -hmm. trying to interpret it bring in a, a, a feel of the African um, a flavor to what you know the, the world is doing now and Definitely the world is taking notice of what is coming from this part of the world mm -hmm. and realizing that they need to also key into it. And that's why you're seeing the likes of um, the big celebrities abroad mm -hmm. now wearing prints. Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Majority of the designers that you see, um, the outfit you see on all the stars are from, actually majority of them are Nigerian made. You know, and that's a plus for the uh, African fashion sector, mm -hmm. um, industry, really. Yes. And you, we can but, you know, applaud, you know, the fact that we you know we're getting center stage globally now. All right. We, we've seen uh, celebrities like Beyonce, mm -hmm. Rihanna, Janet Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, and even Michelle Obama yes. have mm -hmm. used Ankara at different times. You'd be yes. like, wow, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is it about the Ankara now? I, is it the marketing strategy that is getting that world attention or mm -hmm. it is the uniqueness of what mm. it's made of? It's the uniqueness. Oh, okay. Um, the vibrant colors. I mean, you know, with um, what hap happens with the international fashion industry, it's a seasonal thing. They have seasons and they create designs for the, each season. Yes. We are all season people mm. and then we are very vibrant. Suddenly they realize that, you know, these vibrant colors that work all season in this part of the world seem to be very strong. So um, the other international designers are realizing that if they do not key into this, they might lose, they might lose the um, attraction. Yes, yes. Yeah. So now yeah. you find the likes of Gucci, all the big names now, you know, incorporating this vibrant fabric into, I mean, they're almost trying to make it best, but it's actually <laughs> impossible it's Everyone now. knows now where everybody it comes knows. from. That's, that's the danger now. Yeah, because but you everybody can, knows. You can be sure that, you know, a decade down the line mm -hmm. or two decades down the line, mm -hmm. uh, you would lose that uh, trace mm -hmm. to, to Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, the good thing How about... How do we sustain mm -hmm. this and even take it further? The way we've been able to sustain it and yeah. make it ours mm -hmm. is the fact that, you know, we... Um, a lot of the designers now are actually de they're actually defining the fabrics themselves too. Uh -huh. They're not making it only what the manufacturers are creating and giving. They're actually becoming a part of it. Oh, we want you to create this kind of designs for us. We mm -hmm. don't want to stick to this. So that way we, we give it an identity. And so they also are also realizing that too. And then the way the African designers can interpret those fabrics is really strong. You can actually feel that Africanness, mm. and you can also see that it has this um, international outlook, but it still holds its identity as an African fabric that is, you know, used by African designers. And so that is the area that they've not been able to, you know, um, that douse the the fact that it comes from this part of the mm. world. And the manufacturers also recognize the fact that, you know. 
this is an African fabric, and they know the strength of you know attaching that to it and selling it to the world. What really makes it African fabric? Is it in terms of you know it, it the patterning being, being manufactured locally, or is it the patterning? Is it's it the, the patterning? Is the patterning? Most is it of the, the texture, time? like you have Aqueta, for example. I know there's Ashoke, mm. you know, in this part of it's of actually Nigeria. the patterning yeah, because yeah, you, most of the time you find out that they come to take inspiration for how the fabrics will look. Sometimes it's, it comes to an area, it might be the, 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 the plants around the area, mm. the animals, it might be um, some abstract um, thing they see. So that's what, yes, that's what defines how the designs are done. Mm. They're not the regular, you know, you, you, some, there's no way you see it, you just know that there's something ethnic about it. So yeah. you can't take that away and that's what makes it stand out. And that's what has become, and then the fact that for like most of the Nigerian designers, I've also have a, the formulated a way of enhancing it. You find them stoning it, blinging it, putting lace. So they just make it theirs. And that's what makes it attractive, mm. even to the um, fashion forward people who are in the um, high, um, like who are more like the celebrities out there. Yeah. And that, you know, and then now what, what has helped, was also helped is that a lot of the designers are now participating in major international shows. Uh -huh. So that way you, you come like on the, the runway. New York Fashion Week. Yes, New York know, Fashion Week, the Milan Fashion Week, the Going to Paris Fashion Week, mm. London Fashion Week. And now we also have a Fashion Week that is African, the African Fashion Week London, the African Fashion Week Toronto. So, so there's no way you can ignore the origin of this, this, um, this fabric. So we're taking over. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but I need basically, to do that. Yeah, but basically, mm. let, let's come to look at it. Africans have a way of um, whatever comes from here. There's mm -hmm. this sentiment mm -hmm. attached to it where you, you bond with it so much you mm -hmm. want to make it African. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to the global stage mm -hmm. where things are happening, mm -hmm. where designers, mm -hmm. you know, all the big boys are playing, mm -hmm. should it really matter where the Ankara comes at, 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 at When it comes to playing at that level, mm -hmm. should it really matter where the origin of all of this like, should we hold on yeah, to that? Yeah, should I we think, keep holding think, on to that? I think it's thing. okay. Let's look at the Indian fashion scene. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's the sari is there, it's everybody forever. knows you yeah. cannot take it away from okay. them, no matter how you try to create it. You know, no matter, I mean, there's there was a time it was hot, everybody wanted to wear it. You see the celebrities all mm. tying the saris and everything. You need to have something that is yours that people can take away from you, and that's ex exactly what we're doing there, correct? If you're not careful, you're selling now. You would lose the, the. I mean, with time, if you're not careful and you don't hold on to it, nobody would know it. You know, it's something that's exclusively used by these people from this part of the world. Mm. Those, I mean, and the fashion industry out there have a way of stealing oh. very oh, yeah. fast anything that they see has a market value. They steal it, and before you know it, they're making it look as if it's no longer yours but theirs. But how much market value does um, Ashoke or Aquete? have on the global oh, uh, yeah, direct well that's the one from well there. the point of the matter is that um, beyond it being just what we tie I mean like with the Ashoki okay, mm -hmm. what has happened now it's transcend just being a gilly and Ipele thing mm -hmm. now people are doing bags they're doing canvases mm -hmm. tennis oh, at, yeah, I've um, seen a lot of that. they're doing pants they're doing all sort of stuff yes. with them. So it now has, it, it, it goes beyond what we do with it. And then the funniest thing is that we actually introduced that we can do more than that, just to, just to give it that market value, like you said. Mm. So now we're making you realize that you, you can actually use Ashoke to do a bag, to do a um, tennis shoe, to do um, um, like a fascinator. So it comes mm. useful for all kinds of stuff. Thanks. And you know, the market has, you know, embrace that mm. you know so you go into some of the big brand uh, big, big stores abroad you find those these things not just as the gele which we use mm -hmm. they're not being used for other things so there's a bigger market for it than just a head tie okay in, in mm. all of this we see that the, the vibe mm. usually comes from nigeria oh, nigeria yes. is, is always are, I mean, the I mean, arrowhead oh yeah, yeah. Nah, but, but <laughs> taking it away from nigeria mm -hmm. like maybe in tanzania or mm -hmm. kenya mm -hmm. how are they accepting this Funny enough, they're beginning to do that. Mm. Beginning to that. You, know, you, you know the funniest thing? When you actually go into the uh, markets in Lagos, you find out that a lot of the African um, um, uh, people from other African countries actually come into Nigeria okay. to do large box sale. Uh, a purchase, mm. you know, they come in to buy your Ashoke, okay. they come in to buy your Adire, they come in because they can do that. So they take it because now a lot of um, with the internet and everything, social media, they can see 
the fashion statements that are being made here and is exciting to them. So they're realizing that, you know, we also want to play big like this one, this country is doing and we need to embrace some of the things that are coming from them yeah. and so just the same way nigerians also go to some other african countries to get the ankara because we have our style in ankara patterning mm -hmm. if you go to ghana it's a little different mm -hmm. yeah. if you go to um to uh, gambia Kenya. it's different mm -hmm. the well it has a big market yeah. for ankara i mean they have exclusive designs too so you go so there's an interchange of um okay ideas in terms of what the styling should be the patterning should be and we are doing um some kind of marketing together so it's it, it's it's not just um ankara being a nigerian thing is an african thing now well, speaking of marketing mm -hmm. african fashion is, it still comes very expensive mm. oh yeah oh yes that's what exactly where, is wrong, wrong that's where the government has to come in uh -huh. you know okay. now the bank of industry has made um available funds to help um, alleviate that, um, I, I mean, help the fashion industry mm -hmm. grow. I mean, we know how difficult it is to go to some of the regular banks, commercial banks, to get them to the interest that are crazy. So what you now find bank and industry doing is identifying with, the, I mean, it's a big business. Mm -hmm. brought, it's about a billion dollar business. Mm -hmm. You know, now the government has to come to help to cushion some of the things that makes it impossible that makes it impossible for them to trade the way these other countries are doing mm. i mean we should be doing mass production there should exactly. be a hub a, a, a fashion hub where designers i don't need to have a fashion um a workshop i can just you know do my designing and take it to mm. to the, the outlets the, yes give yeah. it there and mm. then they'll design so there can be a chain yeah that's chain. so that would help to bring down the cost because that's the only reason why um the trading in all of the other international countries are much more attractive and you find people doing more i mean i don't if, if i do a design i go to the runway to show off uh, show my designs i should be able to say or oh, i get the orders like they do abroad and the, those fashion shows are actually meant for you to come and view to buyers stockists come yes. there to view and they see your collection and they're like oh i like this one this one this one and they place their order mm. so you if you had the the manufacturing hu a hub in your country all you need to take that order take those designs take it to them and they will produce mass and the, the more you do the less the cost mm. but the problem with uh, uh with us here is the fact that we don't have that and that's one thing um government needs to um invest in to help obviously government doesn't recognize the they, fact they that this do is not a understand huge yeah. yes it is huge everywhere in the yeah. world i don't i i mean i think south africa has gotten that they're the only ones right now that are doing what you're finding all the other uh, international fashion um, uh, countries doing, mm -hmm. countries that we see as the fashion cities mm -hmm. doing. South Africa has gotten that. Nigeria has to get to that. And we have the capacity to do it. It's mm -hmm. just having them to believe that, you know, this is another way of getting revenue for um, the country and right. making a name the, for the country. Uh, as, as, we fashion, round off, um, as we round city. off now, we, just like in the movies where Nigeria has led, mm. everyone has understood and mm. got caught the bug of the mm. fact that Nigeria is leading mm -hmm. in music, in entertainment. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. taken over mm -hmm. the entire Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, in the fashion industry, certainly is still coming up. What mm -hmm. would it take to draw government's attention to understanding that uh, it's a huge industry, like you say, mm. that can spin money. I think I think government is beginning to recognize that, okay. and that's why the Bank of Industry has stepped in as a medium through which you know you can empower a lot of the young designers that are coming up, mm. and then training them. They also you know besides you know making the funds available, mm. they are also creating uh, little little workshops where they can be taught the business of fashion because it's a, okay. you have yeah. to learn that mm -hmm. it's not just about cutting and sewing and then producing and putting in your store. It goes beyond that they have to teach you how to do the pricing how to you know um the different channels that you yeah. need to so they're not beginning to realize that we need to train bringing people to train them to understand that business of fashion so i know it's going to be it's going to take a while but it started already but are they taking advantage of this how aware really I they mean, are the young, oh, even the young like, fashion yeah, designer exactly. for yeah. example for to instance, actually take advantage um, of this the the fashion industry they have bodies they okay. have like the fadan they have yeah. bodies and these bodies are uh, the ones that the the bank of industry is dealing with okay so they are the ones who would now you know get the people and then tell let them know what is happening and keep getting them aware mm -hmm. of all the um op opportunities that are open onto them mm -hmm. you know so they are becoming aware of you know what it's been is out there for them to take advantage of so mm -hmm. they're doing that you okay. know and, uh, and i know that i mean a few years back we are, went here but we're getting 
we are getting there. We are understanding what it takes, you know. And for that reason, that I tend to celebrate them. Like I, every year, I you just to let them know that your work is on, you know, is ap appreciated, appreciated. here. Mm. We do a, an award event to celebrate some of those who are outstanding mm. in that okay. in that um, in that um, sector. So it's it's um it's a process that is um going to lead to something very positive. All oh, right. Mm. Uh, well, according to uh, Deola Sego, a top, uh, well-respected <laughs> fashion designer yes. uh, herself, African fashion is currently contributing to the continent's GDP, but only very small, very small. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, quantity of it. Mm. Thank you so much, Susan Eyo Ikpe. <laughs> Thank you for you joining for us. Me. Mm. Thank Bring you. Bring the glitters on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.